This is African American History is American History. Welcome. I'm your host, Harlan Kearsley. This program's goal is to foster understanding, promote discussion, and expand knowledge through stories of historical events, bios of unsung heroes, as well as timely and relevant news stories, which hopefully will paint a vivid picture of the effects of segregation, discrimination, and bigotry on the lives of both blacks and whites. Comparisons will be made between the many racially fractured periods of American history and what's going on right now. In Washington, D.C., on Wednesday, August 28, 1963, the March for Jobs and Freedom in Washington was held. Today, most people know it as simply the March on Washington, or the march where Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech. But however you know it to be called, this historic event is considered one of the most pivotal moments in U.S. history. But just two months before the march, there was very little interest in it. By 1963, marches in and around the Capitol were becoming rare, and this one, a march to advocate for the civil and economic rights of Negroes, was not particularly popular. A Gallup poll just a few weeks before the march revealed that 80% of Americans knew about it, and of those, only 20% approved, while 42% did not. 18% thought it wouldn't accomplish anything, and it would most likely end in violence. President John F. Kennedy, who was trying to get civil rights legislation through Congress, tried to talk A. Philip Randolph, the titular head of the march, and Bayard Rustin, the deputy organizer, out of it. Segregationists in both the House and Senate, including Democratic congressman from South Carolina, William Jennings Bryan Dorn, criticized the government for cooperating with the civil rights activists. Senator Olin D. Johnston, also a Democrat from South Carolina, rejected the bipartisan invitation to attend, writing, You are committing the worst possible mistake in promoting this march. You should know that criminal, fanatical, and communistic elements, as well as crackpots, will move in to take every advantage of this mob. You certainly will have no influence on any member of Congress, including myself. Senator Olin D. Johnston, along with Congressman William Jennings Bryan Dorn, were Dixiecrats, members of a faction of Southern Democrats that stressed states' rights and were staunchly opposed to the civil rights programs of the Democratic Party. Throughout the mid-1960s, 1970s, and even 1980s, these Democrats voted with the Republicans at the national level while remaining with their old party in state and local politics. In 1963, many Republican elected officials attended the march, unlike in 2013, which marked the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. Event organizers for the anniversary invited top Republicans in the same spirit of bipartisanship as the first march. All Republican elected officials declined to attend, claiming scheduling conflicts or ill health. This is African American History is American History. Many participants said they felt the 1963 march was a historic and life-changing experience. Democratic State Senator in the Georgia State Senate, representing Senate District 36, Nan Grogan O'Rock, then a student at Mary Washington College, said, 
I stepped into the movement when I stepped onto the streets on August 28, 1963, to join the march on Washington for jobs and freedom. Well, you couldn't help but get swept up in the feeling of the march. It was an incredible experience of this mass of humanity with one mind moving down the street. It was like being part of a glacier. You could feel the sense of collective will and effort in the air. I then organized students at Mary Washington College in Virginia to join anti-racist activities and actions through the YWCA. I worked at Atlanta SNCC headquarters in summer 1964 and staffed the Greenwood, Mississippi office during the August MFDP Atlantic City Challenge. MFDP, that's a Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. I have been a state representative in the Georgia House of Representatives since 1987, representing inner-city Atlanta neighborhoods. I worked for 10 years for passage of Georgia Hate Crimes Act and continue to work on health, civil rights, civil liberties, workplace and union rights, and women's issues. I am a founding executive committee member of the National Labor Caucus, a national network of union-friendly state legislators. Over 500 cameramen, technicians, and correspondents from the major television and radio networks covered the event. The event also featured many prominent celebrities of the day, including Harry Belafonte, Sidney Poitier, James Baldwin, Jackie Robinson, Sammy Davis Jr., Ruby Dee, Diane Carroll, and Lena Horne. A large number of white celebrities came to support the cause as well, such as James Garner, Charlton Heston, Paul Newman, Joanne Woodward, Marlon Brando, and Burt Lancaster, among others. The March for Jobs and Freedom in Washington is credited with propelling the U.S. government into action on civil rights, creating political momentum for the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. This has been African American History's American History. The episode you've been listening to, 1963, a pivotal year for civil rights part two, the March for Jobs and Freedom, was written and directed by Harlan Kearsley. The voice actors for this episode were Jeffrey Schubert as South Carolina Senator Olin D. Johnston and Rebecca Downs as Georgia State Senator Nan Grogan Orock. I'm Harlan Kearsley. And on behalf of everyone here at African American History is American History, thank you for listening. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. Once you do, you'll be notified as soon as new episodes are posted. Thanks again. African American History is American History. Copyright H.C. Kearsley, 2019. 
In part three of 1963, a pivotal year for civil rights, we'll focus on the Children's Crusade. <laughs>